In this session, I want to talk about the Altman Z-score, which is a bankruptcy predictive model used by a lot of bankers, credit agencies. Um, it was developed in 19, 1960s by Professor Ed Altman of New York University, and he tested it on a number of manuf publicly held manufacturing firms to help try to determine are there ratios that in combination could help predict bankruptcy of the firms. The model we're going to talk about in this session he has been adopted and used by Altman for private firms, typically more the aim of this series toward the lean finance privately held entrepreneurial firms. As you can see, the private firm model is comprised of five different ratios. The first ratio, X1, is simply networking capital, current assets minus current liabilities, divided by total assets. The second, X2, is retained earnings divided by total assets. In other words, a, a bigger, more financing, long-term financing structure type uh, ratio. Three is EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes, divided by total assets. Four, the book value of equity. These are private firms, so we're using the book value straight from the balance sheet, divided by total liabilities. And then finally, five, sales divided by total assets, or as sales turnover, or asset utilization, as people call it. Now, Altman used in these five ratios, put them in all combination and put a weighting on each one. So once you calculated the ratio for X1 through X5, they each have their own ranking, own weighting. So for, what, for instance, if you, if you came up with a ratio of 0.1 for X1, you'd multiply it by the 0.717 and do that for all five ratios. Once you entered all the ratios, multiplied them by their weight, you come up with, a, with what we call the Z-score. And according to Altman's model and his research, he said if a company's Z-score for the privately held mo private firm model was 2.9 or better, they were considered in the safe zone. In other words, very little risk of going bankrupt. If the Z-score ended up between 1.23 and 2.9, then he entered the gray zone, which means there was a very strong likelihood in the next two to three years that the firm could be bankrupt. And then finally, if the score was below 1.23, this was what we call the distress zone. In other words, there was a very high probability of bankruptcy if the firm wasn't already bankrupt. Now, important to note about why we, we like to talk about this is, one, because people do use it, and it's important for entrepreneurs to understand, you know, what, how, how are their firms evaluated when they go for loans, for financing. Secondly, it's also a good model that has research behind it that you can utilize to even if you don't go for seek financing you can utilize it to monitor your own company's performance because it incorporates five different ratios that look at different aspects of the business a couple things to note about the z-score is that it may not be a great indicator as good an indicator for non-manufacturing firms because typically non-manufacturing firms don't have a very big asset base in relation to their sales Secondly, as we know, uh, and, and Altman points out in his research, is that book value of equity is not necessarily a very good substitute for market value of the equity. So if you could come up with a, a more direct market value estimate, that might be more helpful. Finally, with, with the Z-score, if, if you have a small company that doesn't have a lot in the way of assets, or or your assets are at least small in relation to sales, this will lead to a really high X5 variable, which can give a very, very high uh, Z-score, which could provide a false sense of security. What you want to do is you want to watch, uh, you probably want to limit this to, to monitoring within your firm year to year, quarter to quarter, but also comparing to businesses that are similar to you in your industry and similar in size.